علیکم عزب اللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو لیکچر ٹوئنٹی سیون ٹوڈیز ٹاپک از اباؤٹ امپورٹنٹ ریکویزٹس آف سائنٹیفک نومن کلیچر آؤٹ لائنس وی ویل اسٹڈی اور وی ویل ٹاک اباؤٹ امپورٹنٹ ریکویزٹ آف سائنٹیفک نومن کلیچر وچ آر یونیکنیس یونیورسلٹی اینڈ اسٹیبلٹی اینڈ دین دا سیکنڈ ٹاپک ول بی ایولیوشن آف دا تھیوری آف نومن کلیچر lecture outcome by listening and watching to this lecture student will know about important requisite of scientific nomenclature as a student will also know about the evolution of theory of nomenclature and how the theory of nomenclature evolved through time so what are the important prerequisites of scientific nomenclature there are three most important uh, prerequisites or requisites which should be kept in mind before giving a name to any taxon so before naming a taxon we should keep in mind the first one important requisite that is uniqueness uniqueness it means that the scientific name should be unique and individual during naming of a taxon when you want to name a taxon a newly discovered taxon when you want to name it that name must be unique there will be no such name used before your name in the whole literature and this name should be individual the second thing it must be the only name within the nomenclature so within the zoological nomenclature there will be no same name this will be the only name within the whole nomenclature and the second thing is it must represent just a single taxon mean it's a single name and the single name will represent a single taxon it should not be like uh, that it will represent two three or four taxon because it will create confusion the third thing is the name should be unique because it is the key to entire literature relating to that species or higher taxon for example dog is the vernacular or common name for a dog but the scientific name is canis familiaris so this taxon familiaris is unique in the whole zoological nomenclature and why it should be like that because it is a key to the entire literature relating to the species of dog if you want to search the name of the dog or dog and the whole classification of the dog so you will look for the familiaris if in a literature familiaris is a name for more than one taxon for example dog is the name canis familiaris cat is also has the name familiaris and another species of jackal is also has this name so when you want to retrieve the the data about the dog and when you put the name for search in your computer or in the literature or in the google you want to search the data of this familiaris so when you type familiaris the search will tell you about three or four different 
organism so you will get confused and there will be problem for you during study so that's why the name should be very unique mean canis familiaris the specific name familiaris is only or must be used only and only for dog so that when you search for the literature regarding the dog will let you know about the whole literature of the dog in the literature so when you put the name or type the name familiaris in google or when you look for the name familiaris in any book it will guide you straight toward the history or the classification of the dog from specific species level to kingdom level or domain level so when you we will put like canis familiaris so canis familiaris is from canadi canadi from carnivora carnivora from mammalia mammalia from vertebrata vertebrata from uh, chordata chordata from animalia animalia from uh, uh, uk uh, uk eukaryota so like it is actually a key to the entire literature from species to higher taxon uh, so from even to the eukaryota it's a key so it will cause confusion if the name is not unique if several names have been given to the same taxon there then there must be a clear cut method for determining which of them has validity and by chance if it, if it happens for example if a taxon has many names several names for example for dog if there are 3 4 5 or 6 different name for dog so what we will do so in literature in the in the rules in the zoological code there must be a clear cut way to determine which name has the validity and again we will go to the law of priority and what law of priority says law of priority says that the name which is published prior to all of them which is published earlier which is which is which one is like published first will be the valid name so if there are three or four names so you will look to the date of their publication so the earliest one will be the old one will be the acceptable and the the rest of them will be rejected straight away the second important um, requisite for uh, like scientific nomenclature is the universality so the name the scientific name it should be universal it should be universal mean it should be like known throughout the world and it is it will be acceptable acceptable throughout the world and throughout biological society so not uh, such name sh should be used which is not acceptable throughout the world or it is not acceptable in the biological society so names which are universal should be used vernacular names or common names um, must not be used in this nomenclature because it would be very difficult for taxonomists to learn names of taxa and in numerate languages to communicate with each other so for example if you want to communicate with a german scientist and if you don't know the name of the dog in german if you don't know the name of tomato in german so what you will do if you uh, even if you know the german name of the dog or the horse of uh, or tomato so what you will do when you when you will talk to a spanish person so do you don't know the spanish name of or uh, when you want to talk to another person from africa or from around the world so there are innumerable languages so it's not like uh, easy it's difficult to communicate so vernacular names should not must not be used uh, in the nomenclature now to avoid these problems uh, zoologists have adopted uh, by an in, in international agreement Uh, a single language and a single set of names 
or n must to be used on global basis and it is uh, like normally it's um, uh, latinized words so uh, it doesn't matter from which language the name is derived it will it will be latinized straightforward uh, during uh, uh, binomial nomenclature the third uh, important requisite of scientific nomenclature is stability so like scientific names should be stable and authentic names which are not stable and which are not authentic must not be used because again it's like a, a key to the name of the taxon is a key to the whole literature so if the name is not stable if the name is not authentic so it will cause difficulties for the scientist when they want to study the specific taxon it will cause problem for them so if the name is not stable not authentic it's like a havoc for the whole nomenclature the whole nomenclature system will collapse so that's why stable names and authentic names must be used the name must not be changeable the name must not be changeable in any circumstances now why because once you like uh, included a scientific name and the literature do not change that name because that name is now universal you cannot change it like uh, it's not like uh, you are using that name in uh, a small portion and in a small area you are using now it universally globally so you cannot easily change that name so the change the change in the name is not like uh, applicable you cannot change so it must not be changeable the name should not be changeable so any change of well established name is likely to produce confusion and may be retrieved so like for example when you want to search the name canis familiaris and uh, if it has been recently changed so it will cause uh, like uh, confusion for the whole world for the scientists for the students that what happened and since the name is the key to the information about particular organism therefore even the principle of priority can be set aside by international commission on zoological nomenclature in case where stability is threatened so like this is how, uh, why i was telling about that stability is very important so like uh, it is because it's a, a key to the whole important information about a particular organism so even the rules uh, or the principles of priority can be ignored by the international commission on zoology in case where stability is threatened and in case where stability is harmed so even the law of priority the principles of priority can be like even ignored so the stability is very important um another lecture lecture 28 is about the evolution of the theory of nomenclature so like many provisions of the code are the result of compromises between conflicting principles such compromise go back to linnaeus who nomenclature solved most of the problems like um, you know the zoological code uh, we talked about uh, in the previous lectures about the book the code mean that book in which the whole principles the whole rules regulation for naming or for zoological nomenclature that book is known as the zoological code so many provision mean many editions of this codes are because of uh, through because we are now uh, study uh, studying the evolution of the theory of nomenclature so this nomenclature it passed through like uh, many stages and evolution occurred uh, uh, during that time and uh, the, the theory of nomenclature it changed with time many provisions of this code this zoological nomenclature is present and uh, why it happened because why the change uh, like for example uh, just uh, let me give you an example we have in pakistan we have uh, like uh, the constitution of 1973 we have a constitution in our country so time to time many governments they tried many government like different governments of different parties 
they tried to change some of the rules inside the uh, 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 constitution uh, for either for the betterment or for their own like uh, uh, interests or for the interest of the people or for the interest of the country they tried to uh, change the constitution in article or some small rules or sometime on large scale same is the case of the code of the zoology many provisions of this codes are the result of the compromise between conflicting principles so when there was conflection of sub uh, principles so the provision was made and then change was made in the uh, zoological code and it actually goes back to the Linnaeus who like solved uh, most of the problems in the nomenclature he was the one who introduced this binomial system that's why he is the father of the logical classification so the conflict between stability and priority then taxonomic freedom and the nomenclature rigidity and typification through type fixation and typification through type restriction so the, these were the conflict like stability versus priority stability should be like uh, given uh, in importance or priority is important so as we like uh, just in the previous slide we talked about the stability that we can set aside we can like ignore the principle of priority where stability is harm so like conflict between stability and priority then taxonomic freedom and nomenclature rigidity the taxonomic uh, there should be like taxonomic freedom or there must be nomenclature should be rigid typification through type fixation or typification through type restriction so these are the example of other conflicts that had required compromise compromises uh, then certain important changes uh, occurred in the last 150 years in the basic concept of taxonomy uh, which include including the concept of taxa as population rather than type so like so many changes as I told you many changes occurred during the 150 years the last 150 years and taxonomy uh, like we have the concept of taxa as population rather than type so mean either taxa should be like considered as a type or taxa should be considered as a population so taxa is population rather than type taxa is not type it's population and population mean evolution so the nature of type is name bearer the categorical status of infra specific names and finally the application of certain basic legal principles to the list of nomenclature such as the impropriety of retroactive applications of losses and the stabilization effect of the stage use of limitations the international rules have helped greatly to standardize taxonomic procedures so now like international rules it's like helped greatly for the standardization of the taxonomic procedures and these rules should be adjusted to conceptual developments of taxonomy an unresolved uh, like difficulty a space by different need and different grouping for example a parastrologist must make a tentative assignment of the stages in the life cycle of a parasite even though the connection with the other stage can be established only by experiments similarly paleontologist must be forced to adopt to form genera until the true taxonomic status of the objects placed in these form genera are fully established thank you so much for listening if you have any question please ask